Hi, Will. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Doing all right. Do you like monsters? Monsters? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll give my typical security answer. It depends. Yeah, because I want to talk today about NIST 853, the master oh, that, of compliance. Yeah. That is a like? monster. Yeah. 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 How many how many controls are there in the in in this uh, framework? Uh, it's big. I I, I want to say it's like four hundred and eighty three. Uh, could be more or less, but it's it's over four hundred controls. It's it's wow. pretty big. Which company needs so many controls to implement? Well, I I would say the federal government, because uh, that's that's what eight hundred fifty three applies to is uh, federal computing systems. Hmm. What does it mean? Every company that deals with the federal government has to be 853 to implement more than 400 controls? No, it, it's it's for, think of internal to the federal government is 853. When we start talking about outside the federal government, that's where we have uh, mm. the NIST 800-171, which is, uh, in a, uh, we call it NFO, which is non-federal organizations. Mm. So, the, you know, there's uh, there's a NIST, um, kind of a NIST requirement for everybody. But uh, yeah, 853 is, is specifically for uh, use internal to the uh, federal government. So is, is it like the, the father and the mother of all the NIST, uh, other NIST compliance framework that everything is taken from that? It, it's definitely, the, the you know, one of the oldest. And so right. when we look at other NIST requirements, a lot of the definitions will come out of the uh, 853. Hmm. So what is uh, unique about this compliance framework? What is uh, special about that? So, you know, I, I would say what's what's interesting about 853 is is a lot of the compliance requirements actually copy from the the 853. So, you know, I would I would say it's it's the uh, the 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 granddaddy, the ancestor of almost all compliance um, here in the U.S. Uh, you know, we can directly map a lot of a lot of different compliances out of 853. Yeah, but let's say that I'm a company that uh, already complied to NIST CSF and now the, C the NIST CSF 2.0 and now we, uh, I have a requirement to be compliant to 853. Is it difficult? How, how far is the two compliance framework from each other? Very far. So, so NIST CSF, I would say, is kind of the basics, right? Mm -hmm. So we look, we look at CSF and we say, Okay, you know, we we can start with CSF, you know, we get, you know, probably about 100, 100 or so controls. Um, you know, I would say that's the foundation for any company. Um, mm. You know, I've used it at banks, I've used it at, at other organizations. But, um, you know, when you're getting into 853, it is, I would say, taking security to the depth, right? It's instead of just, just covering the basics or, you know, uh, creating a kind of a semblance of maturity with 853. I mean, the documentation alone is, uh, volumes. I've been at organizations that, you know, they'll have a four inch thick binder, uh, mm. for their, for their system security plans, um, under 853. So, um, the definitely a whole lot of paperwork but uh, a lot of security controls as well and there is also a big difference from cmmc which is also to the federal government but uh, as you said from external parties yeah so so with with cmmc you know that that's based on the nist 800 171 and so between the 53 and the 171 really the distinguishing identifier between them is you know, one is for, for federal government and one is for not uh, non-federal uh, systems that still have federal data. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we call that controlled unclassified information, but uh, within the federal government itself, you know, the NIST 853, it's, it's protecting things like top secret information. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the controls that are built into 853 are really stringent. 
Um, you know, they, they cover everything. Um, and you'll have five controls that when you read it, they, they read the same, but there's like one word differences. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it really looks at every aspect of a system. So you should be, you should be a lawyer to understand what is written in the 853. Well, and, and, you know, we, we, I, I think a lot of lawyers write them when we can start looking at the language. You know, I, I was always taught that security policies and things should be uh, understandable by someone with, uh, you know, a high school education. But, you know, you read some of these and you're like, I have no idea what they're asking for. But, uh, you know, luckily with NIST, there's a lot of definition and implementation guides and things like that. But uh, it's definitely a, a monster, as you put it. Yeah, so so you so you need a CISO, a virtual CISO, together with a lawyer to understand what what you should do in order to be compliant. And I wonder that if uh, how many MSPs and MSSPs do have customers that need this NIST 853. So I I think it would be you know if there's uh, smaller departments that they're helping out within the federal government. Uh, but one of the things that that we see a lot more of instead of people that need NIST 853 directly as a requirement is people that are choosing or companies that are choosing to follow the NIST 853 mm -hmm. because of how complete it is. Um, but but we also see it under under other names. So we do see some requirements for FedRAMP, right? And so, uh, you know, FedRAMP was designed to assess cloud and SaaS applications for use with federal data. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we look at FedRAMP and those requirements are pretty much a one for one for the NIST 853, you know, low, medium and high. And so uh, in FedRAMP, we see low, medium and high. And so, you know, FedRAMP is really a program uh, to assess cloud and SaaS applications, but it, really the controls are, are all still designed around the NIST 853 and the levels uh, hmm. the low, medium, and high level within NIST. So FedRAMP and NIST 853 is, is the same, but the audience is, is different. Well, no, I, I would say the audience is the same because FedRAMP is to put federal data, right? Hmm. It's, um, but uh, you'll see like with Microsoft, uh, Amazon, and Google, you know, you start looking at, they'll say like FedRAMP moderate or FedRAMP high. You know, as a as a virtual CISO, you know, I can look at, you know, the the NIST 853 requirements, uh, which you know are the same security controls as FedRAMP, and say, okay, they have FedRAMP, so here is a kind of a semblance of the security that uh, you know is being taken care of by these providers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's uh, difficult to manage, difficult to implement. And you need a strong virtual CISO and MSSP to handle that. A absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, you know, understanding the nuances and the definitions and where it applies. Um, you know, I can see you know, inside NIST 853, you can build an entire security program, you know, from one standard. And, um, you know, you look at all the other requirements um, like the ISO 27001 and you know, some of the others, uh, almost everybody will do a mapping. And so they'll either map to the NIST 853 or the NIST CSF. Mm -hmm. So pretty much any compliance that you want to fall under, um, you know, if you do the 53, um, you'll have a map uh, to, to everything else. So a lot of companies will, like I say, choose to do 853 just because if they can cover that, they'll cover anything. Yeah, so don't, they don't, they want to uh, handle the master, the monster. Yeah. So, okay. you know, the, the, the one area that 53, I think, is lighter on than other standards, though, that we've seen, you know, over the last, you know, 10 years is privacy. And so, you know, I think that's one area that you look at other frameworks and I say, you know, here's some things that don't map, but it's really more on that privacy realm. Uh, than the security because uh, you know fifty three is is very heavily in in security. Yeah. So Will, I think that you are a, a monster yourself because you uh, succeed, <laughs> you, you succeed uh, to uh, handle this uh, NIST eight hundred fifty three, uh, the master of uh, the master and the monster of the compliance uh, frameworks. So uh, thank you for this uh, excellent explanation about uh, the NIST.
and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing uh, more mi- with, uh, wisdom from the monster. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.